I think I just found my first car that I'm going to rebuild here on the channel. Well, hold on. Before I even answer that, let me at least take you to the beginning. <laughs> Good morning. We are on our way officially, Heather and I, to Copart. Any uh, any thoughts on this trip? I would love a new car. I don't know what to expect. I've never been to a place like this. I know you guys have seen my other videos. I've been talking a lot about wanting to buy or purchase my first salvage car. And we're getting closer to that day. So I am getting super excited. I was lucky enough to have a special permission from Copart of Punta Gorda. That's where we're headed in Florida to uh, film some of the cars. That's right. We're headed to Copart a special place where some of you might see it as where cars go to die and others as an opportunity to get the car of their dreams at a reasonable price. And there's nothing I love more than getting a good deal on something that's usually expensive, especially on cars. So that's why today we need to figure out the ins and outs on how to actually purchase one of these salvage cars because I'm sure there's a lot more that goes on here than what meets the eye. And if all actually goes well, then I'm going to buy one of these and show you the whole process, fixing it up, breaking down the cost, and seeing if it's it's actually worth it. Coming from somebody who's never had experience working on cars before, this should be pretty interesting. All right, so I guess we have to go here now. They, they changed the address. Mm. All right, let's go see. You can see all the dust all over the cars. Very cool. I was putting on our safety vest. In order to go to Copart, you have to have your own vest to walk around the lots because there are some pretty large forklifts you do not want to get hit by. So this is Copart Punta Gorda. Got our vests on. Let's check it out. Hopefully we can find something to buy. It will rebuild on the channel. So for those who still need a bit more context on what Copart is, it's simply a place where cars go to get auctioned off at upwards of 50% off their original price. But there is a catch. More times than not though, they usually have been in an accident or have been totaled out by an insurance company. Now what makes Copart unique is that you can find almost anything here, from your typical Nissan Altima to your classic cars, boats, motorcycles, all the way up to your supercar exotics. The best part is in order to actually purchase just one of these, all you really need to do is become a member. You can also go through a broker, which is just somebody who is licensed as a dealer to purchase salvaged cars, depending on the state the car is in. Otherwise, Copart has even made it possible to buy cars 100% online through their auctions, and they make it really easy to find, bid on, and even win the cars you thought you could never afford. All right, guys, so I have a list that I made on my phone of some of the cars that we can check out here at Copart. As you guys see, I just found a, a BMW M3. We're gonna look at the damage, assess it, see who the seller is because there's a lot of things you want to check out and figure out before you go spend your money. It's very easy to press bid now and win an auction, but you don't actually know what you're getting yourself into. So let's see what's actually going on. All right, so right here we have a BMW M3 and the lot number that's on the top, if I look it up, I'm able to see more information about the car and this can help me determine whether or not I want to spend my money on it based on some of the, the information that it says. You need to figure out you know, what the title code is the VIN, the odometer, highlights about the car, what some of the damage is, the value, if it even runs and drives. So that's why it's super important if you're going to buy a car on Copart to physically go inspect it, or at least at the minimum, have somebody else inspect it for you. So keeping all that information in mind, when I inspect this vehicle, I'm trying to recreate the accident. This way I can figure out how it was hit and therefore what should be damaged. This is so I can create a list of parts needed to rebuild the car. And doing this will help me not overspend when it comes time to actually bid on the car. Given this was clearly hit from the front, I can see it needs a bumper, a headlight, crash bar, fender, maybe even a radiator and condenser, and most likely some suspension pieces. I can also infer that if the accident happened while in motion, then most of the airbags should have went off as well. Front airbags deployed in here, but otherwise it's very clean inside. It's actually, it's almost really new. I can't tell how many miles is on it. I can press the start button and we could see if any lights are on here, but there's a good chance the battery uh, is dead. But I don't want to start it, but I will just press the button and we'll see. Nope, no power. We have keys but there's no power. With the vehicle not turning on, that means there's either a dead battery or a pyro fuse cutting the power to the car and not letting us even see the mileage. So it's a complete gamble. All right, so we just found a Bentley Bentayga. Heather seems to like it. When I look up the lot number, this car says water flood and certificate of destruction. Maybe it can be sold for parts, but it can never be on the road. So you can see they put a marking on the door, NA. That means not available. There's no mileage on this car that they were able to see. But we can go inside and you can tell 
It's got a smell to it, and you can tell there's sand inside of it. It's almost like there's mold. You can see I wouldn't even be in here breathing it, but there's mold on the steering wheel. There's mold on the dash. This is something you got to think about. This interior has to be deep clean. Black mold from the ocean, you know, from salt water. Carpets, you can smell the mildew in it. This is something, you know, you want to stay away from. Otherwise, it's gorgeous. Well, little did I know, the more time I spent walking around, the more sunburnt I was getting. Anyways, I found this Dodge Challenger RT, and this is a good example of making sure you think about all the possible things that could be damaged. From the looks of it, one might think it's just a crash bar and maybe the trunk tub it needs replacing. But remember, this is a rear wheel drive car. With an impact this hard, there's a good chance it could have pushed the drive shaft into the transmission, which means it could make this rebuild that much more costly and that much more time consuming. 2021 Dodge Challenger scat pack right here and it is a certificate of title salvage rebuildable of florida which means this car after you fix it is allowed to be rebuilt and put back on the road legally water damage anywhere no i don't even see a flood line See anything it smells like brand new Try to, don't put your foot on the brake, but press the uh, start button, it's on the left side. Anything? No, it's dead. Brand new. Don't you just love seeing cars like this? Uh, 2022 or 2021 AMG GT63 S AMG. This is like my dream car but obviously I can't afford a car like this, even salvaged or even flood damage. I just don't have the money, nor is it a smart idea to spend the money on something like this as my first car. So I just wanna check this out and I see one more down there in AMG GT that I wanna check out. If you could smell this through the camera, you would, you'd throw up. It's so bad, it smells like the ocean in here or worse, just like moldy and ugh, everything's rusty. So a car like this is certificate of destruction and probably can only be sold for parts because these carbon fiber trims and accent pieces all still work. Everything here is corroded. This is why you want to be so careful when buying these cars. Salt water is so highly corrosive. Everything, all the electronics, everything in a flood damaged car, depending on how high the water level got, would be completely corroded and destroyed. It only has 740 miles. Starts up. It's like brand new in here. There's nothing. There's like no, no water. Oh, look at this. Check this out. Doesn't look like there's any flood damage, but gorgeous, supercharged. What do you think? Is this your dream car? <laughs> I would say, yeah, I would Range take this Rover over the Mazda. SVR. It's brand new, 740 miles. It starts, run and drives. All the dealer stuff is in the back of it. And it's all carbon fiber, everything. Everything's in here. I think we're gonna head out of here right now. We're gonna go check out uh, either a sublot or um, another co-part location because these cars are all out of my budget. There's some nice cars here, but there's one car in specific that kind of fits my budget and what I'm looking for, and it's not at this lot. So we're gonna have to catch it back and go check out another one right now. All right, we made it to Clouston, Florida. It's about an hour and a half to two hours away from where we just were. This is the overflow lot from Hurricane Ian. So Puna Gorda got completely filled. They told us to go to Clouston. That's where we are. I got super burnt. So now I have to put sunscreen on. That's a, uh, a costly mistake because it really hurts. But as you guys can see, it's completely white out here. But there's some really, really, really cool cars that we're on the hunt for. Some supercars as well as hopefully uh, some of the cars that maybe I would go on and purchase to rebuild here on the channel. Check this out. We just found a Ferrari 458 here at Copart. Come a little closer. I just want to show you. This is why it is so important to come check out these cars in person or at least have someone do it too. This hood was left open, but look inside of it. Flooded, completely filled. Now, obviously, you could probably clean this up and still use it. The engine's in the back, but this is, you know, everything is full of surprises here. Check this out. 
We just found an M8 and something to really keep in mind about these flood damaged cars. Yes, they can be super cheap and you can get a good deal. But the other thing is you need to know how far up the water actually came. Check this out. There's water in the headlight of the M8. Not only, you gotta read some of these signs. No ODO means no odometer. This is where the water line came. That's up to my waist. All the way up to here, about four to five feet of water. Let's go look at what's on the inside and hold your nose. Oh man, check out the inside of this. It comes with both keys, but boy does it stink. The whole car was flooded with salt water and backup. I'm super happy I made the drive out to Copar. Not only was this a learning experience, but it allowed me to really see what it is that I'm getting myself into. There are so many cars to pick and choose from, and I really just want to work on them all. Obviously, I can't, but hopefully you guys watching can help me figure out which cars I should rebuild and which ones I should obviously stay away from. Now, I already have one in mind, but nothing's set in stone right now. So let me know what car you think I should rebuild down in the comments below. This is a car you can rebuild. Well, actually, maybe not. The water line is right here. Yo, do you see that? Yo, come here, check this out. See the orange right there? Yeah, what is it? Yo, it's a Performante. It's a freaking a Lamborghini Huracan Performante. This is gorgeous. This is brand new too. It's a brand new front end. Oh my God. Oh my. Oh. Ugh. You have to un unclip it so you can put the car in neutral. That's what that's for. That red right there. Mm -hmm. This thing is gorgeous. Like my dream car right here. I think I just found my first car that I'm gonna rebuild here on the channel. Now, it's not the Lamborghini Huracan Performante behind me, but I am getting a really good idea as to what car that I wanna rebuild. Whatever the case may be with this car, I wanna give you guys a hint. The next car that I buy, I'm pretty sure I know what it's gonna be, but this is just a hint. If you think you have an idea to what my first car is that I'm gonna rebuild on this channel, make sure to drop it down in the comment section below, and I'll catch you in the next video. Make sure to subscribe and peace out. This is a 458. Oh, too late. Ooh, this lot is full of surprises. Check out what we just found. Itsy Bitsy Frog. I think he's... Ribbit! Oh! Oh! Oh my god. He's alive!